In this tutorial, we are going to create and test a promise in two different ways. Testing a promise is an area where most of the JavaScript developers struggle. But let me tell you, it is very, very simple. So there is nothing really special when you are going to test a promise. So let's do one thing. Let's first of all create a promise. Let's call it test promise. Let's make this method which should return a promise. Within it, we can write function resolve reject. And let's write a set timeout in it. We can use arrow function resolve one and say 3000. So it's a very simple promise which will get executed after three seconds and will return one as a resolution. Now we need to write then callback. On success, we should execute this function and it should be say result and it should return say result into two. So it's a very simple method. Let me explain once again what we are going to do here. So we have created a promise in which we are executing this statement set timeout which will happen after three seconds and will resolve and return one to its success function. So one will be received here in the result and eventually it will return result into two. Okay, let's write it as a three. So it should return now six. So eventually this promise will return six after three seconds. Let's now write a new test suit. We can skip this one and let's create a new test suit and let's name it test the promise promise test case. Now in this unit test case, I'm going to call my obj dot test promise. Now if I call it and if I run it, what will happen? Okay, let's run it six pending oh we need to remove skip and uh, let's run it again so it says it's passing but this is not what we want so in this test case we have simply called this method and we have not waited for this method to be completed so what we need is it is returning a promise so we should write a then callback we must write function what are we expecting we are expecting result whatever the test promise promise is actually returning and then we should write expect result to be equal six okay now let's run it and see what's happening if i run it it's say one passing but still it's not working why let me tell you, let's say expect false to be true. Let's run it. It's still passing. Now you can notice that here we have a statement according to which this test case should fail, but it's still not failing. So why is it not failing? Because it is not tracking the completion of the promise. What does that mean? Let me tell you. First of all, let's do one thing. Let's reduce this time to 1000 only because there's one more thing that I will cover later on. And now let's do one thing. There is a callback method available done, which keeps track of the completion of an asynchronous call. If done callback is called even at a later point of time, at that point it will decide whether a test case is actually a successful test case or not now let's try to run this test case again so test case is failing now and it is giving an assertion error that expected false to be true let's make it false now false to be false and let's run it again now the test case is passed you can validate like this as well 61 now this should fail yep it is failing 
and it's giving us this output expected 6 to equal 61 now let's do one more thing now let's remove this one and let's increase it time to say 10 seconds so we have increased the promise time to 10 seconds it will be resolved after 10 seconds now let's run it again and let's see what happens let's see if it waits for 10 seconds and it is failing so it does not really wait for 10 seconds it gives the timeout after two seconds that okay the time has exceeded so I am going to fail this test case so in that case what we need is we can use timeouts first of all let's reduce it to four seconds so that we are not supposed to wait a little longer and now what we can do is we can use this dot timeout for say five seconds so maximum five seconds we will wait and after that if still the promise is not resolved we will declare it as a failed test case let's run it once again it will wait for five seconds maximum five seconds it is passing okay and how much time it took 4003 milliseconds but it could be possible that we have six seconds over here then in that case this will fail right because we are going to wait only for five seconds so the better is that you should always use zero here this means that wait as long as the promise is not resolved or rejected now let's try to run this test case with all these values one two three four five six yeah okay so how much time it took six thousand and six milliseconds so this is very easy to test your promises but little complicated to write such kind of code so we do have a provision to write better and neat code using the library chai as promise so let's do that let's install that and then we will rewrite this test case let's now install npm i hyphen hyphen save dev chai as promised let's now use it so first we need say let's use it as a const chai as promise require chai as promised and then chai should use chai as promise let's now rewrite our test case and what we need is we don't need done now we don't need this section we do need this one now what we need is we should return expect my obj dot test promise to eventually equal six and that's it let's try to run this test case now it will wait for six seconds for the set timeout so it is passing after 6001 millisecond just to test it whether this code is working or not let's write it as 62 and let's run this test case once again so after six seconds we will be able to know it should fail and it is failing why because it is expecting 62 but actually it is returning how much six so that's how we write unit test cases for our promises it's very simple and i must recommend use chai as promised library while testing your promises so that's it from this video in the next video we will learn how should we mock XHR calls.